Hey y'all, PotsCooperLemonCooper.com. Hello, what Pots got? Today I got a quick simple review, unboxing review of the Rockwell Blade Runner X2. And in some places they have the Works Blade Runner, it's the same, same company. So today we're going to look this thing over and test it out a little bit, see how it works out. So let's open it up and take a look at it. So this is Blade Runner X2, Rockwell Blade Runner X2. It says it is a portable tabletop saw and cut seven substrates. I guess you cut whatever you got a blade for, actually. And it takes a universal T-shank mount and basically it's jigsaw blades. Comes with a limited three-year warranty. And when you open this up, you look at the top of the box here. I don't know how well you guys can see this. But it shows the seven different substrates, which is wood, wood, <laughs> tile, wood, wood, or at least it all looks like wood, metal pipe, and more wood. Right, so makes all kinds of cuts. I don't know what the difference is, but that's what they say. So we'll see. We'll open this up. Oh, let's look at this. Before I open it up, let's take a look at the back of the box here. So looking at the back of this box, it's included in this package is the Blade Runner X2, five different blades, a fence, and a wire gauge. That you can use. It also has a vacuum port on the fence, has a spot for blade storage, and of course the fence and wire gauge. All right, so let's open this thing up, take it out of the box, check it out. All right, let's start by looking at the saw itself. It's, uh, you know, plastic, all plastic, but it, I mean, it's pretty, it seems pretty sturdy. Uh, it does have rubber feet around the edges there. It's got an on-off switch where, and you can pull it out to lock it. So if you got kids around or whatever, you can keep them from getting in it. That's the on-off switch. It's got the blade storage compartment there. On the top, around the blade, it's got this little insert here. And then it's got this, it actually has a metal plate for material to ride on right there, which is pretty nice. This is right here. This is how you insert and remove blades right there. You push down, pull over and unlocks it. We'll look at that a little closer in detail here a little bit. So that's the Blade Runner itself. It has the guard. This is the guard with vacuum attachment. And it slips right in the back here. Comes a little instruction booklet there to put this thing together, but it, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You gotta put it together. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll look that up. So you got your little nuts or bolts. You got these bolts. They go on the back side of the guard here. They go through the tabletop. And you got these little wing nuts. You go on here, hold your little fence, or not fence, but your little guard in place. Just like that. Now your, your little guard is held in place right there. And I'm guessing that this here is a, an adapter for vacuum. Just like that, there's an adapter for your vacuum. This arm, it's actually made out of metal, so I mean, it looks pretty good. And of course, this shroud right here is made out of plastic. And the back side is made out of plastic. You loosen this nut up to raise the arm up and down. And really, there's only two positions, up or down. This little middle position I put it in is really not correct. We put it in the all the way up position in order to remove and install the blade and then all the way down position in order to operate the unit. Now, the shroud is designed to come up and down. This unit is only designed to run a material of a thickness of about an inch and a half. So really, there's no reason to have more than two positions for the arm. Now, I don't know how well you guys can see. Let me get you to come in here. So right inside here are a couple of little guides. So when you put the blade in, it'll kind of ride on those guides. So when you're making a cut, hopefully it'll help keep your blade straight. Let's see what else we got in the box. Okay, here's the little fence. So the little fence goes in these little slots right here, here, and here. And I gotta say, this fence is a nice little extruded box. I don't know if it's aluminum or steel, but it's a pretty nice little fence. Loosen up the, those finger nuts. And tighten them back down. And if you look here, let's see if I can get you to focus on here. If you look here, each side has a ruler so you can move this fence up and down. Now, how accurate it is, I, you know, I don't know. Okay, so it's got the fence, then it's got the miter, little miter gauge. So that miter gauge rides right inside this slot right here. And of course, it's got its kind of protractor degrees, 60 degrees on either side. And it slips in, you set it however you need. And then of course it comes with these five different blades, one for cutting tile or stone, and cross cut, and rip cut, metal cut blades, and they're all the universal T-shank blades. And then it comes with this little gadget right here, and that fits on the blade to, to drop the blade in place. So you slip that on top of the blade like this, kind of helps you get a grip on it without getting cut or something. Also, I might add that uh, they got a couple of spots, one on each side of this thing, where you could mount this down into a permanent spot if you so desire. All right, so let's put our we put our blades in here, just like that. Blade storage, like I said, it comes with the 
instruction manual. I don't really know that you need one. Somebody might. Three year warranty with a registration card. You can probably actually go online and do that registration in the age of the internet. Yeah, this basically just goes over everything we just talked about. Got a phone number if you need some help. Send it all up, table inserts, yada, 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 several different languages. All right, now that we've kind of got this thing unboxed, let's put a blade in it and let's see if we can cut some materials. Step on in here, we're gonna take a look. All right, y'all, here we go. Let's uh, see if we can put a blade in here. All right, so you take the little insert out and you can see there's a little roller there. And then of course, push push down, pull over and it opens it up. So let's take a look at these blades that they got in here. So they have a metal cutting blade. They got a ceramic tile cutting blade. This is a wood cutting smooth. So it's got a few more teeth. This is aluminum cutting. And this one is wood cutting scroll. See, that's all I can tell it's a little bit narrower. So you can make a little bit tighter turns. All right, so let's start with the, I guess the wood cutting smooth and see if we can get just a smooth cut. Push down, over, and then just drop your blade right in, and now it's locked in position right there. And if you want to do it that way, then you can put that over either way, or you can just leave this in, I think. Let's see what happens. Just like that. <laughs> like I said, I ain't using my little tool that they give you to pull that out. You know, I can see where this thing might come in handy if that is a hot blade. If you've been cutting something, and that's a hot blade, that thing will probably come in handy just for taking it in and out. I mean, unless you got delicate hands, back then, you probably don't need that. Now, if you look, right, so it's got this roller, so when you push that blade back, it runs on that roller, and then here, I don't know if you guys can tell, but inside there's a couple rollers for side-to-side -side action on that, okay? Pop this back in, so you drop down this guard right here, and then we'll just start with something like a piece of plywood here. Now, let's turn this thing on. Eh, it's kind of loud, but not too bad. So when you're cutting, you want to set this gauge down on your material. That way you can keep it from vibrating too much. Guess I don't really like that about it. it doesn't... That's better. Okay, so you might have to loosen this up enough to get it kind of to release before you can lock it into place. Now we got it locked into place, so that's good. So now, probably want to fix this up just a smidge so it's not putting a bunch of pressure on that. Okay. So the material will slide under there, and let's see what we get. All right, so that worked pretty good. I don't know if you saw that, but it was kind of moving, so it might behoove you to, to clamp it down, but it did make a pretty, pretty nice cut on that, and that was the smooth. So, and of course, that's just some plywood. Let's see if we can move this in. We'll line this fence up, and see how straight it cut it'll make for us. Of course, my plywood's probably not exactly straight either. This is just some scrap plywood I got, so I can't really count on it being straight. But. So it's not really a straight line, but like I said, my plywood probably isn't too straight. So there's a piece of plywood. That cuts pretty, pretty nice piece of plywood. Let's try a piece of two by four. So two by four, I guess we have to raise this up some. I got the fence all the way up there, or the guard shroud all the way up. Oh, ready, tighty, lefty, loosey, and we roll away. So piece of two by four, yeah, I don't like that already. Okay, so I gotta say that two by four, not so much. Every time I try to tighten this down, it wants to pull it back down. Well, let's see, I kind of got it there, but let's see, it's not really happy. All right, let's see what happens. I worked on a two by four, it just takes a little finagling to get the fence right. I don't think it's really designed for a product that big. Let's see if it says what the recommended thickness is. Okay, so I was looking to see how thick the material this will actually hold. And in the little booklet, I didn't see it, but here on the box, it tells what the table saw, I guess, uh, specs are. And it says that the stroke length is three quarters of an inch. The table saw size is 15 and three quarters of an inch on the top, tabletop by 17 inch tabletop. Uh, T-shaped blade, rip capacity on the right side, that's the rip fence, is six inches. And the cutting capacity for wood, it says it would up, do up to an inch and a half. So I just did a two by four, which is an inch and a half roughly and it was a pretty tight fit you kind of had to finagle it next we're going to try some of these other ones but it says pvc pipe up to an inch and a quarter ceramic up to three eighths of an inch aluminum up to three eighths of an inch steel up to an eighth of an inch and the weight of this thing is 14 and three quarter pounds essentially okay so let's get back to running some stuff through it all right let's try a piece of hardwood here's a piece of oak let's see what happens so we did the oak we did it wrong i didn't say anything 
I don't know why y'all didn't say anything, but we didn't lower our fence down, right? So ideally, this thing should be down on it, like that, okay? And you can see, I didn't exactly get it straight, but that's okay, because uh, I didn't exactly have it straight. So with that said, let's try our little wider gauge. Set it zero. All right, I got it set at zero. Let's see how well, see if I can straighten up it. Yeah, it's not perfect, but a lot better than it was. Obviously, that's the piece I cut off. So when you're using a jigsaw or bandsaw, you always cut a little bit outside the line so you can sand down to the line. You're never really going to try to make perfect cuts. Okay, let's see what else we got. All right, let's swap this blade out. So swap this blade out. We'll get the little tool there. Just like Nana said, it might be hot. Just like that. Now let's try this scroll blade and see what kind of turns we can make on this thing. So we saw on that other blade we was able to make that tight of a turn. Let's see what we can do on this one. Not too bad. I don't know if you saw the smoke, but uh, it started smoking a little bit, so it's probably kind of hot. But that'll uh, that'll cut really probably as sharp a turns as I need to cut. So, not too bad. Now, of course, the back of the fence back there kept catching my wood on it. Let's pop this out. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I didn't tighten up that back. Okay, I don't have any aluminum, so we're gonna try this uh, metal cutting blade. Now, I know it says the capacity is up to eighth inch steel. I was gonna try to cut this pipe. Or, and this bolt, or well, it's not a bolt, I guess it's a anchor, concrete anchor stud. But before we get to that, I said I don't have any aluminum, but I got a steel stud. So let's see if we can cut through this steel stud. I don't know, we'll see how it works. It'll be kind of interesting. Well, it was kind of rough, but uh, not bad. Actually cut pretty good. Of course, it's a fresh blade, so I'd use it for that. Let's check out maybe the stud. Probably gonna have is that's probably gonna get hot. So I'm gonna pick this up off the table because I don't know if that plastic's gonna melt if this gets too hot. I'm use Nana's yard gloves, kind of tight. Okay, not too bad. That worked. Would I probably do that every day? No, but yeah, I'll probably be using it for that. All right, but what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna try to cut that. I'm not gonna cut that, that's for sure. That would be way too much. But what I will try to cut is this EMT conduit. This should cut pretty easily. Okay, my battery died, so you can see that cut pretty good. I don't know if you saw it jump, and it jumped when it caught, when it got ready to go through the backside, but that happens, but I use it for that as much as I use it to cut EMT. Now, I was gonna try to cut this, but I'm um, thinking not. It's, uh, yeah, that's way too much. So I got a little piece of PVC, so I need to change this blade out again. I could probably use that blade, but it's not really what you're supposed to use when you cut PVC. All right, I know this says this is the aluminum blade, but it'll work for this. All right, we got that locked down. Oh, that's down. Very nice, very nice. Okay, one blade left. Uh, let me get a piece of tile, and then we'll try the tile blade. All right, so I got a piece of tile, ceramic tile, and this is probably, that's about 3 eighths. And that's what it says, the capacity of cutting capacity on this is a 3 eighths ceramic tile. So let's see what we can do. Well, it's, it's cutting it, but it's gonna take a while to get through that. That, that is not, not cutting very fast. And then it could be the quality of the blade too. I Yeah, I don't think I'd use try to use this for cutting tile. Either that or I'd need to find a better blade. That thing ain't gonna cut it. Okay, y'all. Keep watching. We're gonna wrap this up. We're going through everything. So let's wrap it up. There you go. That's the Blade Runner X2. And I found something out when I was looking at putting this thing up that if you would have read the instructions, or if I would have read the instructions, I would have known this sooner. But if you look underneath this thing, I think I've been using it. There's a little bracket right here. This little bracket. Is made you open it up so that when you're using this thing you know when I was using it it was kind of sliding around you open that bracket put it on the edge of your table or whatever and it keeps it from sliding around from when you're pushing against it genius yeah I should have been reading the instructions huh? yeah I'm not good at reading the instructions so I found that out and then also underneath here is a little storage clamp for your wire gate it goes right here 
just like that. I thought it was kind of dumb the way they have this set up because when you put it on there, now you got this thing sticking out. I don't know why they did that. They, I don't know why they couldn't have made it somewhere where it wouldn't hang out like that. Yeah, I don't know. But that's what they did. So that goes there. And of course, you got the fence, locks in there, put your guard down like that. So there you go, that's the Blade Runner X2. And it also works also makes a version of this because works and Rockwell are the same company. And I believe theirs is called the Blade Runner 2 X2 as well. I got this at Lowe's for like 100, 120, 30 bucks, something like that. I don't remember. But I'll put a link in an Amazon link in the description. I have an Amazon affiliate link I'll put in the description for the Rockwell or the Works, either one. So far, so good. I haven't really used it that much. But for what I'm using it for, I think it's going to be great. I'm using it to make mostly cigar box guitars. I don't know if you've ever seen those. But I got a video, and I'll link that video. You can check that video out. And hopefully, eventually, I'm going to do a how-to video. But the video I've got out now is not a how-to. So, anyways, it's kind of loud, but it's not any louder than any other jigsaw that you might use. And, I mean, because that's basically all it is. It's just a jigsaw that's mounted upside down in here with a table on the top. And that's it. That's all it is. Seems to be well constructed, easy to use, very user friendly. I don't necessarily know if I'd use it in a professional setting, maybe for some things like maybe for cutting maybe laminate flooring or something like that, hardwood flooring, but I definitely wouldn't use it for the tile. You saw the tile, it, it was hard to cut. Now, unless there's a better tile blade, they might make a better blade, tile blade for that. I don't know, but it's more, more of a home user type of equipment. And that's all I am. Yep, that's it. Hopefully this video helped you out if you're looking for something like this and it was informative for you. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, well, you can give me a thumbs down too. Either way, we'll take what we can get. I understand that not all videos are for everybody. Either way, leave some comments. Good comments, bad comments, constructive criticisms. We take them all. We try to respond to all the comments. Experiences that maybe you've had with the Rockwell Blade Runner or the Works Blade Runner. Maybe you got a comment, a recommendation, a path to something other than this that somebody could look into. Maybe you have some ideas, requests for other videos. We do more than reviews. We have travel videos, how-to videos, and it's got crafty videos. Check us out on our social media, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter at Living Cooper. And check out our blog over at livingcooper.com. And lastly, probably most importantly, please subscribe. We appreciate the subscribers. Hit that notification bell so you're notified next time we upload. And check out our other videos, and we'll talk to you guys next time.